Seneca Lake is known for wine, waterfalls, and racing. And today we're going to talk about the history of racing. Yes, car races and how it all started back in 1948. Hi, I'm Pam Pariso and I do these videos to remind people gently that I'm in the business of real estate. So if you know of anyone who's looking to buy or sell property around Seneca Lake or in the Finger Lakes region, to please reach out to me. My information is below. Did you know that Watkins Glen is considered the birthplace of American road racing? World War II put a stop to a lot of sports and entertainment activities in America, but in the late 1940s, people started to look forward to them again. Watkins Glen served as the venue for the first post-World War II American road race back in 1948, October 2nd to be exact. It started with a car show and then hundreds of spectators and drivers showed off their cars from all over. So a race was mapped out to be a 6.6 .6 mile crazy course right through the village, around the gorge in Watkins Glen State Park, up through the hills and then through surrounding farmland and then back to where everybody started. There was a junior Grand Prix that started at noon and it was four laps. And then there was a Grand Prix for the winners of the Junior Grand Prix that started later that afternoon that was eight laps. Spectators lined the streets without any kind of special protection from the race cars. And the races began from a standing still start. The race circuit took competitors down the main streets through residential neighborhoods, turning sharp 90 degree corners and then racing up what is now Route 414 back down and around into town. The cars were old European factory produced cars, MGTC midgets and a couple of homemade specials. They raced over a route of asphalt, gravel and dirt roads up and down hills through the busy streets, business streets, residential areas, crossing a stone bridge and even over a railroad crossing. This entire idea of bringing road racing to America and actually to Watkins Glen was the idea of a man named Cameron Arkesinger, a racing enthusiast from Youngstown, Ohio. He grew up taking summer vacations on Seneca Lake at his father's cottage. He was a Cornell University law student in nearby Ithaca, New York. He proposed an amateur road race to be called the Watkins Glen Grand Prix to the local Chamber of Commerce and they were enthusiastic and supportive. He's credited for bringing European style racing from across the ocean to little old Watkins Glen. Just to give you an idea of how crazy this is, Watkins Glen is essentially a small tourist town. It's not very big. You could walk from one side of town to the other in maybe 30 minutes. It's literally less than two square miles. So back to the Junior Prix. Some sources report that 23 cars lined up in front of the courthouse from a standing start and then they raced around the track four times. Out of those 23 cars, only 17 crossed the finish line. Top qualifiers from the Junior Prix then qualified for the eight lap race later that day called the Grand Prix. 15 cars started and 10 finished. The checkered flag grand prize winner was Frank Griswold Jr. of Wayne, Pennsylvania. He was closely followed by Briggs Cunningham and his famous Bew Merck. Other prominent entrants were William Milliken, who later rolled a car, and they call that now Milliken's Corner. Charles Adams, that's A-D-D-A-M-S, two Ds, who was a cartoonist who later created the Adams Family, and Miles and Sam Collier, probably they were brothers, and they're major figures in the history of U.S. road racing in America. Residents welcomed and housed and fed the visitors. They also admired the beautiful sports cars and cheered on the racers. This started something really big in Watkins Glen, and they continued to host this Grand Prix right on the public streets from 1948 till 1955. So there was a second race in 1949, and then there was a, a third race in 1950, and this is the race that brought tragedy for the first time. When a driver was killed, his name was Sam Collier, his car fishtailed and it rolled during the race and he was killed. Also that same day, uh, a car left the road and injured a fireman and two spectators standing at the side. So in 1951, the fourth race, 
Things had to get more sophisticated with communications. Plus, New York State started clamping down on forbidding racing on state highways and across railroad crossings. Spectator safety obviously began to be more of an issue. Can you believe it? People actually used to stand behind piles of hay bales for protection, which probably was no protection at all. Then the first permanent circuit, now known as the Watkins Glen International Racetrack, opened out on County Route 16 away from the village out in the town of Dix in 1956. So when you come to Watkins Glen and are driving down Franklin Street, you're probably going to want to stop and hike the Watkins Glen State Gorge. But look across the street near the courthouse and look for the memorials to this race where the actual start and finish line was. History reports Cameron is the man who brought full international races to Watkins Glen starting in 1958 and then beginning in 1961, he was the organizer and race director of the Formula One United States Grand Prix. Formula One enjoyed a successful run of 20 years at the Glen Circuit. He was then named executive director of the Sports Car Club of America in the 70s. He later served as commissioner for the International Motorsports Association in the 80s and was president of the International Motor Racing Research Center until 2007. Thanks for watching.